Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some important stuff. First up, top crypto analyst says massive 2.7 billion Bitcoin whale move signals high net worth investors are scooping up Bitcoin. And this is just one of those stories just that allows us to take a step back, when in doubt, zoom out and see exactly what's going on for the big picture of our market. Also, crypto banks are going to swallow fiat banks in three years or even less. This is a fantastic article written by Mark Benz. And the only thing that I can really say about this is, do you really think it's going to take three years? And also in some strange news, a Bitcoin themed art piece sells for $130,000 at Christie's New York. And this really isn't the big story. The big story is that the art piece was supposed to go around 13 or 14,000 and it pretty much is 10 x just like cryptocurrency market. And we're getting all that, but first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today, it is Saturday, beautiful Saturday, October 10th. It's around 4 p.m. Texas time, and oh my, oh my, what the market is doing. I do like these days. So Bitcoin is up 2.7%, almost, yeah, well, a little over 7% for the seven-day period, and we're at 11348 and hopefully uh, we can see a little bit of a pump up to 12,000. But in all honesty, Sundays usually aren't really a good day for cryptocurrency. Usually there's a bit of a dip and then uh, the crypto market starts to rebound on a Monday. So maybe 11.4, maybe 11.5 at the best, but if it hits 12,000, watch out. Ethereum, 374. I mean, this is a massive run actually for uh, Ethereum. It was it a dip below 350. I think it touched around 340, 333 or something like that. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely, back up to where uh, I'd like it to be at almost 3%, 8% for the week. So a fantastic week for Ethereum holders. Tether's tether, nobody cares. XRP, 25 cents, jeez. Bitcoin Cash, 1% up, that's pretty good. Binance Coin, 0 0.3, eh. Chainlink, up 3, 15% for the week, and it's back up to above $10 at 1067. So another fantastic week for Chainlink because it had actually dropped uh, pretty precipitously uh, below that $10 mark. So I'm pretty happy it's hit that. Polkadot is right where it should be, right a little bit above $4. Pretty happy with that. Everything's fantastic. And one of the big stories here, Cardano. Cardano over a week period has increased by 15%, uh, almost 5% in a, in a 24 hour time frame. So what's going on? Well, what's happening is that Ethereum 2.0 is going to be delayed for another year. And that is bad news for all the different projects that are that have hopped onto Ethereum. One of those being um, Singularity.net or, sing, or not Singularity. So this is just one of those uh, companies or projects who said, you know what, if it's gonna take this long, I mean, we got things to do. Look at what's happening in just the DeFi space, right? In four weeks, it had uh, massively run up, exploded, imploded, and kind of come back a little bit. So do you really think we've got two years to wait on Ethereum? I don't know, but uh, I will tell you who's in the wings waiting to take over. It's Cardano, and they've got some massive plans. Litecoin up 3%. Uh, I really don't care about Litecoin. I'll just be, I'll just be honest with you. I, I I don't care about if Litecoin goes up, great, but it's not a big thing for me. Uh, I'm a cheerleader for everybody, but Litecoin just doesn't really excite me. Crypto.com 1.9. Let's see what else. What is there? Anything fantastic? Woo! Cosmos interoperability um, looks like it's doing pretty good. Seven and a half percent. What else we have? Five percent for IOTA. No idea why. My fave. One of my new faves. Theta Network. And I will always thank Digital Dave over at Crazy for Cryptos for introducing me to Theta. Fantastic stuff. If you don't know, I've already done a couple of live streams over there. And I got to tell, tell you, it is fantastic. It's fun over there. It's really good. There's a lot of engagement. And guess what? There's no scam videos over there. So I really like that. On top of this, uh, VeChain is going to be competing directly with Google. Uh, well, more specifically with YouTube. Even though Google is uh, one of their... Uh, node operators, they are still going to be uh, competing directly with Google because starting next week, they'll be doing video on demand. I think I just got an email from Theta TV where they're going to allow me to do uh, a video on demand. So, I'll, so just like how you YouTube, you can go to YouTube, you can search one of my videos for a month ago, same thing's going to be for Theta. So I'm excited about that. Uh, I need to actually update my information so you can find me over there because it's pretty fun. Anyhow, VeChain 0.1, uh, Zcash 5.2, Aave 10% for the week. First of all, does anybody know where I can get Aave? <laughs> it's, 
That's what I'm going to ask you right now because I was looking for it. I was actually on Alex Maschioli's show uh, yesterday and we had talked to the founder and uh, fascinating, fascinating guy, super smart, humble, uh, really nice and also doesn't push the envelope doing the safe things to actually push decentralized finance and uh, I have to tell you I think it looks pretty good so Abe is one of those things I can actually keep my eye on I might actually add it to my portfolio who knows maker six and a half percent what geez nine percent for yearn if you ooh. well that's how it goes and what else we got nothing really big before we move on I want to say thanks to the wallet company extra for reaching out and giving me and my subscribers 25 percent off of their flagship product, the Extra Wallet. Uh, it's pretty cool, I got one myself, and you can keep up to seven or eight different uh, cards. You will never lose your wallet, because there's a, there's a chip in there that allows you to find it, which is pretty cool. I've lost my wallet before, and let me tell you, I almost had a heart attack, and it's got pretty great reviews. So if you'd like to up your style game, then Extra, you got a pretty good product. So yeah, that's what it is. And also, if you order the uh, Extra Wallet, looks pretty nice right here, right? Uh, you get 25% off uh, just by using the uh, link below. Now, just so you're aware, this is an affiliate link, so you will get 25% off and I will get compensated for that, uh, but that is the uh, extent of our agreement with Extra. So go ahead and check it out. I've got one, pretty cool, like it so far, and uh, let's move on. All right, so first up, top crypto analyst says, massive 2.7 billion whale move, signals high net worth investors scooping up Bitcoin. And we know this is happening, but it's just good to see the data on it because it no lets us know we're moving in the right direction. So what is going on? So this is Willie Wu. Willie Wu, you haven't heard of him. He's one of those big traders on uh, Twitter, and he's been around for quite some time. He's made a lot of good calls, made some bad calls, as all traders do. But this is what he talks about. He says, look, uh, the Square, Square app, which, you know, Jack Dorsey of Twitter fame, who also owns a couple other billion dollar companies. Well, he owns Twitter and he owns uh, Square, so not doing too bad. But they just purchased almost 5,000 Bitcoin. And then MicroStrategy's 38,000 investment in Bitcoin, he states is just the tip of the iceberg. And look, I've talked about this ad nauseum. These are big companies and they're making big plays. And I think a lot of the different CEOs and different corporations looking at going, hmm, our money's on fire. Uh, we're losing a lot of it because of inflation. Maybe we should get into Bitcoin because it actually holds its value. Just saying, just saying. Anyhow, in the past eight months, Willie Wu says investors have reduced the speculative stockpile of Bitcoin on exchanges by uh, a quarter of a million Bitcoin. That's a lot, worth about 2.7 billion. So. If you have to take a look at what's going on, I always like to take a step back. When in doubt, zoom out. And I know institutional players are coming in because of data like this, data from Santimit, uh, data, data, data. And also, I also like to talk to uh, Alex Mascioli over on his channel. If you don't know, I talk to this guy all the time. But uh, he is the uh, head of institutional investment at Bequant. And I've asked him a couple of times, I'm like, Alex, what are these... Your, your big players uh, actually looking into? Is it Ethereum? Is it Bitcoin? Is it XRP? Is it Potato Coin? What is it? And he said, look, man, it's all Bitcoin. He goes, we do other things, but at a very, very small amount. Every single institution, big player wants to get into Bitcoin because they know where it's going. So I like his channel because like I say, it lets us kind of tip behind the uh, curtain to see what the wizards are doing. And um, I like to see what smart money is going on. But so this article really kind of just lays it out as that is exactly what's happening. And when you have big money investments coming in, more cash flow coming in, and all of a sudden they're buying up a ton of Bitcoin and then people are looking for Bitcoin going, hey, uh, where's the supply? Oh, well, it's drying up. What happens when supply dries up? Well, guess what happens to the, the price? I'm just saying that could probably happen. And then Willie Wu pretty much lays it out here. He says, this is one of the few times in my Bitcoin career where the fundamentals or on-chain data and metrics from infrastructure players are in moon mode. Yet, the market is not woke to it. They will be by 2021. Let me say that again. They will be by 2021. This is an opportunity I've not seen since mid-2016. And if you've been on the channel for any length of time, you know that I believe that 2021 is going to be a big year. It's why I'm trying to clean up the space while we do scam of the day, which we need to do more of, actually. While we try to get rid of the scams, we try to educate people as much as possible, where I definitely tell you about what's going on in the market, I think 2021 is going to be a massive year for cryptocurrency digital assets. I mean, look, look what happened with Kraken not too long ago. I mean, they had a bank charter, a bank charter, cryptocurrency exchange, unbelievable. And then all these different uh, big players that are coming in. I just, I don't see any way around it. 
Actually, I do take that back. The only way I, I see that that uh, it doesn't have a massive year is if there is total global economic collapse for whatever reason, another uh, ginormous uh, pandemic, some type of world war, or some type of uh, just economic uh, downtrod, downfall that it just wipes away so much GDP out, out of all the countries throughout the entire globe that uh, we just see massive uh just massive problems. That's the only way I see really uh, our industry uh, not making big peaks. But you know, hey, let me know what you think in the comments section. But let's let's keep going. He further on states that the market is not woke because price action is a very laggy indicator of fundamental demand and supply. Mania phases of a bull market is when everyone is woke, but it's too late. Right now, supply is being hoovered up, and he means vacuum. It's, it's being sucked up. And that's the thing. Uh, that's exactly what happened in 2017. The, the time to buy is right now when it is boring, when there's nothing going on, when it's flatlining. And that's what he's talking about in mid-2016. That's what the time was to buy, which is the exact same time right now. Because what's going to happen in six months, eight months, nine months, uh, you're going to see some pretty big rises. And when that happens, that's when everybody comes in, but not you and me. Because we're the smart ones. We're here right now. We are doing our due diligence and making our purchases and dollar cost averaging in so we can set ourselves up for the future. Now, when the other people come in, you can't help everybody, okay? And uh, those are the ones that are going to FOMO in hard and they're going to learn a tough lesson. But that is how things go. It is exactly how I learned. Maybe that's how you learned. Uh, Wu states, unlike, unlike many analysts, uh, Wu feels that recent BitMEX charges are a positive for Bitcoin. So if you're not familiar, uh, BitMEX, the CFTC came in and they said, hey, you don't do enough for money laundering. You don't do enough uh, to protect U.S. citizens because you guys shouldn't actually be in exchange. You shouldn't allow U.S. Uh, citizens to actually trade here. I mean, that's beyond the point. The, the, the problem with, with me and BitMEX is that they allowed everybody and their grandmother to trade at 50 to 100x leverage, which means you could put a thousand bucks in and you could leverage yourself up 50, you know, 50,000, 100,000. And you could make a ton of money, but you could lose a ton. And usually what happens with new traders is they lose a ton. And that is not good for the entire market because one person gets screwed out of everything. Not screwed, but they make the wrong decision. And they tell 10 of their friends and those 10 tells 100 and 100 tells 1,000. And you know where I'm going with this. And I just thought it was just bad, just bad. I, I'm not really uh, too enthusiastic about BitMEX. I'm kind of glad they're gone, but they're not the first and they're not the last. However, the, the overarching theme of this article is this. There is big money coming in. And big money, we're talking about like Fidelity Digital Assets, eight trillion assets under management. They're doing pretty good. Meritrade, one trillion assets under management. You got Van Eck. And these guys were big gold bugs. And then in January 2020, they came about and said, hey, you know what? You know what's better than gold? Uh, Bitcoin, way better. Then you got a Paul Tudor Jones, who was like a, a, a legendary trader of the 80s and 90s. And he said, hey, I'm taking one to 2%, put it into Bitcoin futures. Bitcoin futures, and uh, that's his next play. So when you see these institutions coming in, you see all the different money sloshing around, you kind of get a feeling of this could be it, and I think it is. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up, crypto banks are going to swallow fiat banks in three years or less. And my question is, is it going to be three years? Do you think it's that, uh, that amount of time? Who knows? But uh, this is what the article states. And first, before I go on, this is written by Mark Bins. And Mark, he's a CEO of Big Digital Assets, Inc. He believes the future of crypto is safe. First ever occurred in 2013 and was hooked. So this guy's been in the game for quite a long time. Again, he's a CEO of Big Digital Assets. Mark oversees Blockchain Intelligence Group, maker of Key, LUE, and BitRank, and NetCoin. So he seems to know what he's talking about. And this is an interesting article and one that I can totally relate to and I totally agree with that banks are on their way out. They either need to adapt and overcome or they will be buried. So this is what it states. Within a few years... A younger generation of financial services customers are going to be able to walk into a bank, any bank, and gain access to credit products, savings accounts, and investments that can host both crypto and fiat assets. And this totally makes sense. With Kraken coming into the mix, and they were able to get a banking license, which is an officially chartered bank now. Well, it's going through the process. It means that Kraken will be able to offer more banking and funding options to existing customers. It also means that Kraken is going to be able to operate in multiple jurisdictions without having to deal with state-by-state -state compliance 
plans. And this there was an interesting uh, podcast, and it was on Anthony Pompliano just about five days ago uh, or so, and, and it had CEO David Konitsky. Uh, he is from Kraken, and he talks about everything that has to do uh, with Kraken Financial and uh, the bank, ac- not the bank acquisition, but getting into the banking s- uh, sector, uh, going into Wyoming, getting that license and, and what it all means. And one of the things that they talked about, which I didn't know, was that they're going to be able to operate throughout the entire United States, all 50 states. And then they're looking to branch out globally or international. So uh, this is going to be big. Um, I mean, I don't know how it's going to work f- for everybody, but for me, this is fantastic because I've got four banks now for all my businesses and uh, I cannot wait to leave them in the dust because they suck. The only one that doesn't suck is USAA. That's my personal bank. I love them. Other than that, everything takes way too much time. The fees are a little bit too outrageous. And uh, when Kraken gets this all going, I will be the first one to open up multiple business accounts with Kraken. Let me step down from my soapbox and finish up with this article. So the states, Kraken is currently working with Silvergate Bank to offer SWIFT and Fedwire funding options to U.S. customers. When I first met this or read this, I was like, why are they working with SWIFT? That is archaic and old school. Why do they do it? I think it's because they have to work with the infrastructure that is already uh, in place for different banks. If you don't know, uh, SWIFT is a very old organization. It is uh, essentially what allows wire-to-wire bank transfers to happen. It was created in the uh, late 60s. I think I want to say 1972. Someone fact check me on that one. Uh, but it's been around forever, and uh, they don't innovate. <laughs> they don't really upgrade. They've done some things lately because of especially because of cryptocurrency, but it's still awful. And um, so they have to work with them. Uh, The one thing I wasn't too sure of was what the heck is Silvergate Bank? I've never heard of them. So I had to look up Silvergate Bank and here's who they are. They're based in La Jolla, California. Silvergate is a Federal Reserve member bank and a leading provider of innovative financial infrastructure solutions and services for the growing digital currency industry. So that is exactly who Kraken is working with right now. So great. So what you've got is banks who they can read the writing on the wall, the smart ones, and they go, you know what, we better work with these guys because uh, we're on our way out. So to finish up, Silvergate Bank is a step ahead of the rest of the moment. The company boasts 880 digital asset companies as clients, and these clients have deposited more than one, wow, 1.5 billion with the bank. That's still a small amount of money relative to the market capitalization of most major banks, but just be aware that that's not the only player in the space because it talks about right here, major crypto exchanges, Coinbase and Gemini are new customers of JP Morgan, even though Jamie Dimon denounced the value of Bitcoin and told his employees that if he catches anybody dabbling in Bitcoin, he would fire them. So just so you know, Jamie Dimon, not a dumb guy. So JP Morgan is going to be uh, on that bandwagon of, hey, uh, where there's innovation, well, we're not good at innovation. So we'll just uh, ride the coattails down that road. And this was the most interesting sentence in the whole the whole article. It says consumers will soon define a full service bank as one that offers financial services in both crypto and fiat. And it makes sense. That's what I'm looking for. I think that's what you you might be looking for as well. When I go into a bank, there is no reason for me to go to one and go, hey, uh, I need to uh, get Ethereum because I want to purchase that because I think it's going to go up and and Maybe I need it for whatever else reason. So can I just buy that here? Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, sir. We're, we're Wells Fargo. We're going to do that trash. What? Okay, well, I'll just go on the road to Kraken, and then they have everything. And then I can do a business and a savings account. Uh, I might be able to do other things as far as financial. Maybe a loan, maybe a mortgage loan. I'm not for sure. I could buy my cryptocurrency. Maybe I can do atomic swaps. Maybe I can do a bunch of other things that you guys are supposed to do but don't do because you're not innovators. So let me just walk down the road. And I think that's what's going to happen. I think people who are going to get used to it and it's going to be one of those things. It's the same thing as like you want to get a a truck tire and then also you need a frozen pizza and then maybe you need toothpaste and maybe you need formula for the kid and diapers. So where are you going to go? Well, you go to three different stores or four different stores or you just go to Walmart because they got everything right there. So the same thing is going to happen here. It's going to be a one-stop shop. And I think the ones that innovate and actually do these things will survive and the ones that don't. Uh, there is the door. Again, Blockbuster versus Netflix. So scrolling down to the very last end, it says, what will happen if banks don't join the party? Any bank still approaching crypto with trepidation over the next 18 months, 18 months, that's more like it, is at risk of finding itself dead in the water at the hands of Kraken and other banks. So those are my thoughts. Now, uh, I could be wrong, but uh, banks, they're are not known for innovation. 
However, there's a difference between innovating because that's what your customers want and innovation for survival. So I think at some point, some point very soon, banks will have to innovate just to survive. And uh, it's funny, sometimes when you wait to the last minute, it only takes a minute. <laughs> and that's what I think is going to happen here. Let me think in the comments section. Let's move on to our last piece. Next up, and this is kind of like a little a fluff piece here, but it talks about Bitcoin themed art. Piece sells for 103000 at Christie's of New York. If you're not from America, uh, there's a place called Christie's where they do a bunch of auction. You can buy a lot of uh, fine art and different items that are up for sale via auction. Very high price items and items. And one of these uh, projects or art pieces that were sold was a Bitcoin or cryptocurrency related art piece. And it was sold for $130,000. And that's not the big, the, the big news. This is the big news to me. This was the piece. It was called Robert Alice's Block 21, a work based on blockchain technology, sold for 131000 and achieved more than 7x its high estimate. And this was a tweet from uh, dclblogger.eth, and he set it up perfectly. He goes, look, this was estimated to go at 12 to 18K, and guess how much it went for? 131K. Crypto is crazy, and the real world is starting to find out. And that's true. If this is any indication of what's going to happen with the next bull run market, uh, you can expect fireworks. Again, just a little fluff piece, but it kind of gets you to see where things are going. I mean, look, even art is selling crazy amount, and it has nothing really to do or very loosely to do with actually a blockchain distributed ledger technology, cryptocurrency, digital assets. So I found it quite amazing little piece there. So look, that is it. That is all the stories for today. I want to say thanks for sticking with me till the very end. I, I appreciate it very much. If you like these types of videos, there's going to be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. I'll let YouTube make that decision. They kind of are great at that. And uh, just check those out if you have time. So again, thanks for sticking with me. Appreciate it greatly. And I'll see you on the next one.